John Richards here. I'm with Shovels and Rope. It is so good to see you. We've been talking on and off over the years for um, about nine years now, I think, is, is where we're at. Yeah. yeah. This is true. It's been a while. It yeah. Has, yeah. It's a little different this time. It's, it's good to check in with you. And I'm so excited to show this session. Before we do, I just wanted to ask where you are now and then where these sessions were filmed, because it's I love it. It's just, it's so intimate and beautiful. Let, me, let, let everyone know what we're going to be watching. Well, I'll say where we are now. We're in our house in John's Island in our kitchen. Um, and we're where we like, you know, live our lives and do the kid world. Uh, it's very beautiful spring. Uh, every azalea and camellia is in bloom and jasmine and wisteria <laughs> and all that. But uh, the studio that is in our backyard is where we made uh, the session. Yeah, it's about like we walk out the backyard. It's about uh, I don't know thirty feet away from our house, and this, we have a structure out there that's like a um, well, you can see the inside of it in the in in the in the shot. It's like all uh, plywood, or like a, a utilitarian kind of um, you know, like artsy little little shack. Mm -hmm. Has it um, has it helped having that during this pandemic to be able to? <laughs> Hide out in the shack. Man. Well, on so many levels. So at the very beginning of pandemic lockdown, Michael and I were and the kids were coming in off a European tour and a tour of the Southeast that ended. Uh, we were trying to like stay on the road because we were in the middle of a huge kitchen renovation. This kitchen that you see behind us, there wasn't a kitchen here. And the idea was to come off of the road when the kitchen was functionally in because without a kitchen, two small children, it doesn't, you know, you might as well just get a hotel and call it a day. Um, and, but the kitchen wasn't done and everybody had to lock down and we came home and we um, lived, we cooked all of our meals and camped out of the recording studio at the very beginning of quarantine and cooked on a camp stove. And that was actually, it was fun when you look back on it, it sucked at the time. But yeah, the studio has always been uh, essential for us, especially since we had little ones to be able to work from home. And since Michael makes all of our records from home, having a space outside of the house has made it so that we can like achieve work-life balance that would be otherwise way more challenging. I love that. And the first song we're going to see is, correct me if I'm wrong here, this is an unreleased song, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what, tell me a little bit about Domino. Domino. Um, it's a song about, it's basically, it's about James Dean. Mm -hmm. It started out to be about James Dean's, uh, car that was like kind of supposedly haunted, you know, and, um, and the one that he crashed and then, the, uh, you know, somebody had some of the guts of it, and put it back together. And then that car crashed and killed somebody. And, um, I don't know this, the story kind of goes on and on, but why don't you just go? Well, so the idea is that uh, James Dean crashes his car and it's his ghost kind of realizing that he's dead and he's walking around uh, fascinated at the effect that his brief film career had on American pop culture. And uh, his little ghost is like just standing. I, I picture the ghost of James Dean standing out, looking inside like one of these 50s diners like, man, not bad. I only had three movies under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Domino. Sticking to my hair, stick, sticking to my thigh Got that sweet silver spider, got that sugar in my Gonna push it till she's smoking, gonna break her 85 Well, tie fire, pumping up the smoke Fire, crack a strap to a can of coke A squeal and a wheel and a speed and a choke Immortal cause America can't ever let me go Did I die last night? Am I walking around? I'm here but not me, I'm a ghost I'm a domino Iconic, super 
Panasonic, 50s America, you know you want it. I'm Jimmy Star, I'm, I'm, I'm out the door. That's what they say, they say you leave them wanting more, more, more. On the mood of your broody generation. I'm you, I'm what you're chasing. I'm the face that freewheeling deals making. Cue all the girls and the boys and the parents are shaking. Did I die last night? Am I walking around? I'm here, but not me. I'm a ghost. I'm a domino. I'm a domino. I'm DOA, give me the lasso Guess I get Paul Newman to play Rocky Graziano on the mood of your broody generation I'm you, I'm what you're chasing I'm the face that freewheeling dealers making Cue all the girls and the boys and the parents all shaking Did I die last night? Am I walking around? I'm here but not me I'm a ghost, I'm a domino I'm a domino We're here with Shovels and Rope here at KEXP at home, and um, it's great to see you as always. Um, I'm trying to think of the first time I saw you two. It must have been at KEXP, I'm guessing, but I still remember you at the triple door running around with my little one. Um, I had a baby at the time, and y'all were so, so kind. Like everyone was talking, and then I brought the baby in the room, and and you just were all distracted by the baby at that point. And oh, yeah. um, I just have a really good, I think that might be technically my second born's first show because oh, he, was, cool. he was so small. So, and, and you have, so you have two at home, two and five, correct? That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. A girl, Louie and a boy, Oscar. And I'm told one dog as well, an older dog. Mm-hmm. One dog. Yeah. An older Senior gentleman. <clears throat> He's, he <laughs> had used to, he was probably with us on that tour that we met you. Um, he was with us. He like forever. He's been everywhere. And now he's 12 and he's retired. And he's like, he likes to kick it at home while we go. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, getting out and, and having that space uh, to be able to record. And for this pandemic, have you, you know, being at home more, I'm sure you can appreciate being at home and not touring. But what is what is your view of not being on the road and, and being home during this last year? Um, I mean, it's hard for real, like, uh, just with kids and with all of the, um, uncertainties and we weren't able to make money, you know, we're, um, cause that's the, that's the way that we make a living is to tour. And, um, but silving, you know, silver linings abound, um, digging in with our kids and, uh, um, this particular age. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we've we've had a lot of time to just make stuff in our studio and be really creative, which is, you know, um, we spend so much time on the road that a lot of times when we do the tour and then come home for a couple of weeks and just, you know, try to slam in the studio as much as we can and then get back back out on the road and go, 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 you know. And um, we've just been able to kind of hang back and, and, um, and you know, approach, uh, approach, music in a little bit of a different slower paced way which has been nice really nice we've all we've never had a chance to um well specifically michael's hasn't been able to track a record and then come back and have a fresh listen it's always really you know there's all gung we're gung-ho all the time and time constraints parlay into part of our creative process you know but uh it's, that's that's been really nice i feel very connected to to the property where we live, you know, I've got, you know, oh my God, I'm turning into my mother. There are, I have planted azaleas <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I have fertilized the camellias and the blueberries. 
Yes, pine straw about, you yeah, know, all of it. Like we have, uh, we have big plans, you know, to make our house, uh, just like everybody in America with any means of, of some, some kind of lifestyle upgrade. It might have been just like replacing your worst slotted spoon, but everybody has tried to find some little tiny lifestyle upgrade that has, will make a huge difference. For me, it's the AeroPress. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on those. We planted it. I'm looking at our garden that that we got very ambitious last spring with, and now mm-hmm. it fa- now we face it again this mm-hmm. spring as we're yeah. coming out of this. So <laughs> hopefully we have to say, hopefully we've learned, and we're gonna plant, and we're gonna you know, like keep those things that we learned during this pandemic. I am Do hopeful so, yeah. on that, and that is also like you said, appreciation for live music. You know, I'm dying to have to go out on a Tuesday and stay up too late where old man Richards, like last year would have been like, yeah, no, I'm not. Ah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <There you> go. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the next song. So it's another unreleased song. Um, this one is called bleed me. And again, thank you for performing these. I'm, I'm so psyched for people to see them for the first time or possibly. Um, tell me about this. Uh, this is a song. I, it's, uh, I wrote it for my son and, um, you know, I don't know. It's about be <laughs> getting drained. You know, <laughs> like uh, I, 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 it's the best. It's about it being the best and also getting drained at the same time. Right. And you know, anybody who has kids can can know that. Um, but yeah, we're uh, thanks for letting us play some new music for you. We always feel so safe to bring you our new songs. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it.
Um, thank you for those two songs. Um, and thank you for letting us debut them um, here at our at-home sessions. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you all out in Seattle one day, I guess, in the next year. Do you have, do you have, can you plan ahead? Are you starting to, you know, I mean, we're, I don't want to jinx anything. I know a lot of people are thinking this way. There is light at the end of this tunnel. Are you starting to see your 2021, 20, 22 become something? Do you, mm -hmm. Are there plans? Mm -hmm. We actually do. Yeah, we actually have, uh, we have shows on the books, you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, Maybe they all won't happen or maybe they all won't happen exactly how, how we think they're going to. But um, they're on there and uh, we've got, you know, we're, we've got a handful of things at the end of April. And um, high water, we're starting to, you know, low, we're not booking it right, like hard. But high water 2022 is starting to take shape. We're allowing ourselves to have those booking conversations. And yeah, I mean. And, See, everything you just have to. We've all learned to be communicative and flexible over the last the last year. And the music industry fans, some of them, you know, have had to reclaim their tickets at some point. But for the most part, people are just like, "Hold my ticket. I'll come to the show. Like, when just book whenever it's going to be. And if they can't come, they'll make arrangements. Everybody has some skin in the game because everybody misses rock and roll. Yeah. I've, there's never been a time in our life like this. Never did you think there would be anything in our lifetimes that would stop live music in in our lifetime. Uh, mm -hmm. I, that's just a thing we absolutely took for granted, even if we don't think we did. Uh, like mm -hmm. I was saying earlier, there are many shows I missed. You know, I remember missing Prince because um, this was wasn't feeling too great that night, or I was tired. Yeah. And Prince, you know, he passed after that, and I missed it. And I keep thinking back to that or thinking of my favorite bands. And I, I just hope that when we come out of this, this appreciation of what can happen with a world without live music really allows people to support artists. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just like, I, I feel like that goes for even beyond music and art and just like life in general and just being appreciative about, you know, everything. It just, there's so much to be uh grateful for and um so much that everybody's missing right now you know it's gonna be um i don't know hopefully it all everybody comes out with a little bit you know a little bit more gratitude i guess well i know um i know everybody up here is ready to go to the shows we're just hoping all the clubs reopen as well so mm -hmm. um let's talk let's talk about um the cover that uh you performed for us um i'm a big fan of this song um why don't you Tell me where you came up, like what, when, what made you decide to cover this song? This, uh, when we had the chance to work with Jack White at um, the Third Man's Blue Sessions, we had, uh, we brought that and we actually cut it that day. It's on, it's the A side to that um, seven inch we made. And, or is it the B side? Nah. Uh, and it's funny, it's, I, Michael is much more accomplished piano player than myself especially at that point and I just remember not having very much confidence and but that was part of what was fun about the recording it's super you know loose um and th and then we kind of dug it up again and with a little bit more confidence and kind of fresh ears on it was just fun like we just had uh, it was a cool cover we could dust off um lyrically you know it, it, Bruce Springsteen songs are never not current, but it just, it also felt like, um, uh, just shining a light on, uh, all, all the gazillion problems that make, uh, like a, an American, you know, break, break and, and end up throwing their life away. Here's uh here's Johnny 99. Wow. He came home too drunk, a mix and tangere and wine. Got a gun shot at night, but now they call him Johnny 99. Out in that part of town where when you hit a red light, you don't stop. Johnny's waving his gun around and threatening to blow his top. When an off duty cop snuck up on him from behind. 
club tick tock, they got the cuffs on Johnny Nine tonight. The city supplied a public defender, but the judge was mean John Brown. They came into the courtroom and stared poor Johnny down. Said the evidence is clear, I'm gonna make the sentence fit the crime. Prison for 98 years, we we'll call it even Johnny 99. Hey, did you all did you all read the Springsteen um, book, the autobiography? I did, I did, yeah. Oh, that's so I, good. I liked Bruce. Yeah, I liked Bruce Springsteen a lot before I read mm-hmm. that, and I have been a, just a diehard fan. Talk about giving more uh, meaning to the songs for me. Like his Nebraska album, I liked. Then after uh-huh. reading that book, it's one of my all time favorite records now. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I actually was. Uh, wanting to hear more about it in the book it, you know he's yeah. he talks about it but not all that much and i was like um you know <laughs> okay I, I i wish he would write a whole another book on just on that record <laughs> um i i was surprised by his new york time too i didn't realize like when he was talking about crashing um sleeping on the bench and in, in in the park and just the time frame i don't know i just didn't put bruce springsteen in that time of music, which is my favorite time, New York in the seventies is like my favorite period of music. Yeah, I kind of miss like I, I I audio booked a little bit here and there, but like I haven't complete, I haven't gotten all into it. But so did he leave New Jersey and run in like what like seventy five or something? He's sleeping in the park in New York. Like what a terrible time to be sleeping in the park. <laughs> I know. And he was like recording there and it was just, I just, uh, I, I, I'm just in awe. And then I, and all of his, you know, when I would listen when I was younger and just a dummy and didn't know anything about Bruce Springsteen, I'm like, man, boy, a lot of his songs are about being in a car. They're just like every one of them. He's in a car. He's going. Mm-hmm. To, and then you read that book and you realize, man, that guy is a road warrior. You know, it make, totally makes sense. Uh, yeah. And he's like, uh, he didn't know how to drive, right? Like, uh, wasn't at the very <laughs> beginning when he like went on the first the first tour and um, he didn't know how to drive, or maybe he didn't know how to drive stick. And his buddy was like, "It'll be fine, man. I'll just get us going, and then I'll go take a nap, and then you can take over for a while. And just wake me up when it's time to pull over, and we'll switch." <clears throat> uh, uh, I like that part in seventy. Yeah, he he when he talks about his dad too, where he he didn't have you know the relationship might have been strained, but he talks about going to work with his dad um, and it being brief, just like one or two times, I think. Um, that really struck me as a parent, um, what kids remember 
um, about their their parents. When you think of your kids and just being immersed in music, um, did the you know the five year old may have a little bit of an understanding, but it won't seem weird to them. But do you think about how your kids will view your their childhood differently than yours? I, I feel like they. I don't know. I mean, we just try to keep it fun for them all the time. The root they they're they're happy kids. They love music. I don't know if they like our music, you know, but they um <laughs> they like music and we sing with them all the time and just like, you know, we'll dance just jam and play harmonica and everything. And um it's just it's just fun. I feel like they you know it, will they'll at least be um you know, we're setting them on the path to um, be able to uh, take joy from music or go to it for music or or maybe to feel, you know. Yeah, and not necessarily as a profession. Certainly wouldn't necessarily, like, discourage them from it, but I hope that living on the front lines and seeing the reality and the the fun stuff and the gritty, the greasy hard parts yeah. of it, that they'll have an informed decision to make, whatever. But yeah, Oscar has no idea what he's going to, when he goes back on the road, he, he doesn't remember turning one on a tour bus in Köln, Germany. Uh, but Louis <laughs> very much um, knows what it means to be on tour, is looking very forward to going back out on the road. And I check with her all the time just about like, I mean, she's only five, but like, how's your childhood going? You know, like, you feeling good about going back on the road? Is it, do you want to, you know, do you think you'll someday want to stay at school and not go on the road? And, you know, as of right now, she has ev no intention of ever retiring from tour. Louis is ready. She's a road dog for life. <laughs> yeah, it's like camping, <laughs> like camping for happy yeah. life. <laughs> she gets to make the pour overs for the road manager in the morning. She's like ready. <laughs> I love it. I um, mean, and that leads me, I should mention Busted Jukebox, which is just a, a great record, by the way. And I, I, I didn't realize you'd asked all parents. Am I right? You asked all parents to guess the new, yeah, on the that. Newest so it's kind, one, of, it's kind of a kid's record. It, it is. Yeah. It was like, we, we wanted it to be a kid's record, but not necessarily for just for kids. Or you childish know? sounding necessarily. So, um, yeah, but we, but everybody that we asked, um, was a, was a parent and, um, you know, we weren't sure how it was all going to shake out if everybody was going to say yes or whatever. So we didn't make a big, that big deal out of it, but that was the intention. And um, everybody was, you know. Everybody, everybody was had, in quarantine with their kids had, and looking for something fun to do. <laughs> so it worked out real everybody good. Everybody was looking for a break from uh, their kids. So they had somebody uh, else hold them while they went and recorded these Sorry. songs. Sorry, honey. Shovels and Rope <laughs> needs me to get this track to them right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's I know right. Junior's hot, hungry. Susie needs a shower. <laughs> That's exactly right. We've had no problem having guests. We, I've done a couple of benefit shows. Man, everyone's available. It's like the best. You know, yeah. You can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the next song we're going to hear, Mississippi Nothing. Um, if you have an intro, I know it's not always uh, easy to introduce your own songs, but I'm always fascinated to know how, the, how an artist sees their songs. This is more like, uh, more or less like, um, you know, looking back at your life and it's these, you know, these two characters that grew up together. One of them was, um, you know, like star athlete and popular in high school. Another one, not so much. And then uh, they, you know, their roles sort of reversed later in life. You know, one of them th that was more successful where the superstar in high school kind of didn't do so much. He's not feeling so great about his life. But he's drunk at a bar with lots to say about it. <laughs> yeah, and he, he calls up the other guy to be like, um, your, your life's pretty good, but do you remember remember back in high school, the good old days? <laughs> <laughs> when my life was great. <laughs> yeah, peaked in high school. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Your joy is killing me I don't have anything Remember when we used to wear each other's clothes Yeah, I've been struggling But I know lots of things And I got an idea that's gonna turn on the money hoes 
Joking on a joke, try to keep it light If I could never quite get the timing right But you, you never know how it feels I got ideas mm -hmm. No one knows We watched you on TV At the recovery The sound was good But you're always looking down Don't take this personally But man, if that was me I'd make more eye contact With the camera kind of worth the crowd Probably think I called and said you were right But I'm blackout drunk in a cotton field on a Friday night And I got nothing to do but tell you how I feel I got ideas So watch out I'm bluffing like I'm some kind of Mississippi nothing But I was first string quarterback Drove you everywhere and That time when Ronnie hit you so hard You tried to drive and wreck your car And I had to help you Wash the blood out of your head Cause I've always been We talked earlier about the, the work-life uh, balance and seeing you two perform, um, it's just, it's so great. It, 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 just the intimacy and just how you play off each other. It, 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 uh, for any couple out there, that is couple goals right there that you're able to um, just have these, just in not just um, kind of emotionally connected performances, but when I see you live, they're also very fun. Like you guys have fun together. And I think it's sort of a, I hate to read into your, your band as a relationship goal, but and don't go um, too deep. Are, yeah. <laughs> You'll do be so do disappointed. <laughs> oh, it's such a disappointment to everybody. I mean, it is, you have a lot, you know, I'm in, I do um, a bunch of things in my professional life with my wife and I, without thinking about it, I do separate myself from the relationship without even thinking about it like when we're trying to figure out like if you're figuring out touring or you're figuring out the next record are you how are you all doing with that and i hate to ask if it's not going well but um are you <laughs> able to separate those things we are but the thing is it's funny we used to be really good at separating the things in fact it was like and michael's really good at compartmentalizing anyway like good uh, but then as everything as the band became the family and the family became the business and the band and it was it is all wrapped up like 
Tor involves the well-being of our children. And yes, there's a show to do, but if somebody's sick, you know, it's like family gets mixed up in it. And, and when we're trying to work out what happens live and what happens in the studio, for example, uh, it is work and it's the musical partnership, but the, like the dynamics of the marriage definitely like insert themselves into the process. I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings earlier about something that didn't have anything to do with music, but now we have to get through the music thing. It's also like <laughs> time, you know, we have a um, limited amount of time to get anything to work together because yeah, we don't have childcare unless the kids are in school. So, and then there's right. always school is always not happening for some reason. There's always a, it's like a holiday or some coronavirus, some, no, <laughs> somebody's sick, you know, it, uh, and so we have to get in a room and kind of look at each other, totally not, not feeling it. You know, it could be like one of those times where you're just not and you can't and you have to, you know, if you kind of get there. And that's like a lot about just the partnership, understanding how, you know, we got to like fig figure out a way. And that's, you know, I mean, we've had to kind of do that this whole time, but it's just more complicated and it's all woven together now, you know. We've managed to play shows for 10 years without ever not having a show because we ha had a fight. The show has always gone on. <laughs> Some of our best shows. It when has we always were, got probably on. When All we of were our in. best shows. <laughs> when we were fighting. Fighting. <clears throat> and then. I love it. So, yeah. Uh, you know, this is, it's a superpower. But it's, I feel like it's an allegory for anybody's marriage, really. It's just that. The, yeah. You know, our stuff happens in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to shout out whoever was in the, the room with you for the performance as well, the camera work. Um, who, who was it? Who that was, was it? Our, our manager, Paul. He's, just, he's, oh. he's uh, a great dude. He's like... He's our Swiss Army knife. He, yeah, he's got a lot of skills. He's, he like edits a lot of video stuff together for us. And um, yeah, he's, he's the best. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, it was Paul who worked with us to set this up. So shout out to Paul yeah. for, for being the Swiss Army knife. Um, yeah. And talk about the next song. Hail, Hail is the last one we're going to see. A little Troubles in a Classic, a tribute to, uh, a tribute to um, rock and roll and Chuck Berry and the way that rock and roll makes us feel in our relationship with records. Is that, would you say that that's Perfect. true? I think you nailed that, yeah. You wrote it. I'm just... All right. <laughs>
Thank you. That was a beautiful session, and I love talking with you and catching up. And I'm so excited for y'all to get back out on the road. Um, and hopefully, people can get this. Will be a nice preview of what people can see when this happens. I think that's the best part of these sessions at home now. And um, thank you for letting us in your home. Oh, thank you. It's good to see you, man. Yeah. It is. It is always good since the OB Joyful days um, till now. It is. Uh, it's an honor to uh, to call you guys friends. I really appreciate you taking the time today. Oh, oh wow. thanks, thanks, John. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.